Chainsaw Man. One of the manga in Weekly Shonen Jump's current lineup that's making the most noise. At its core, it's an edgy, dark fantasy battle manga, but explaining it in such a simplified manner isn't doing it any justice. And that's what the purpose of today's video is to convince you guys to go and read Chainsaw Man. I will say though, clicking the link in the description and either buying the first volume or reading the first chapter digitally whilst knowing little to nothing about the premise, characters and everything else the story entails will ensure the best experience possible with this story. If you feel like you don't need this extensive video essay to get you into Chainsaw Man, I urge you to just click off this video, go to the description, click that link, go read and enjoy yourself because this video will obviously be containing some minor spoilers that could hinder the experience depending who you are. If you clicked on this video though, you probably are going to be here to stay because you want to know why you should read Chainsaw Man and me just telling you to read Chainsaw Man isn't going to cut it. I intend to have you finish this video and feel completely convinced and somewhat pressured into reading Chainsaw Man. So with that being said, let's just dive right into it. Why you should read Chainsaw Man right now. Chainsaw Man is an action and dark fantasy manga written and illustrated by Tatsuki Fujimoto which is currently being serialized in Shonen Jump and has been since December of 2018. It is currently on its ninth Tankobon volume and as of October 2020, the manga has over 4.2 million copies in circulation. That is quite a whopping number for a series that has been around for under two years, so assuming the series sticks around, its future seems very promising. On top of that, there has recently been confirmation of an anime adaptation for the manga. Assuming it's a good adaptation, this will obviously do wonders for the series' success, just like the Jujutsu Kaisen anime has been doing for its success. It's also worth noting that this isn't Fujimoto's first series. He has also written and illustrated Fire Punch, another dark fantasy series that is quite different to Chainsaw Man despite its wild similarities. Knowing that this is Fujimoto's second chance at telling a dark fantasy story and that he has accumulated experience from his time with Fire Punch puts my mind at ease and makes me a little trusting. Hopefully Fujimoto sticks the landing because so far, Chainsaw Man has felt like the gift that keeps on giving. When I read this manga for the first time, I was utterly baffled. I asked myself and others, how is this being serialized in Weekly Shonen Jump? It is savage and violent in very gruesome and dark ways. It features sexual content which, although isn't as explicit as a mature manga like Berserk, is really pushing boundaries when it comes to what can be deemed permissible in a manga with a demographic of teenage boys. And beyond that, Chainsaw Man explores some pretty dark real world content. Sex work is an example of that and you wouldn't expect to see that in a shonen manga but that is prevalent in Chainsaw Man. In the very first page of the manga, we find out that our main protagonist has been selling organs in order to survive, so there's organ trafficking as well. And on top of all of that, Fujimoto delves into some pretty interesting concepts and themes that you rarely see tackled in manga with a shonen demographic. Initially, this just felt a little weird to me because even though I really enjoy this because I'm a big fan of seinen and mature manga, I hadn't seen anything quite like it exist in Jump in the past, so I did some research and I found out that the editor-in-chief of Shonen Jump, Hiroyuki Nakano, has addressed this and has stated in interviews, and I quote, that shonen magazines don't underestimate or patronize kids when trying to market to them. In reality, kids are much more perceptive than you might think and they always want to read what they don't understand. This means that although such series as Chainsaw Man might contain sexual elements that kids don't entirely understand yet, they are still drawn to these series precisely because of that fact. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with Mr. Nakano here, but I don't want to turn this video into a moral discussion, so I won't delve into that. One thing I do want to say is that the dark and mature tones of Chainsaw Man are very thematically fitting and they do wonders for storytelling. It is also pretty clear based off of the way he has written so far that Fujimoto in no way endorses all of the messed up stuff that takes place in his manga. 
and if you've read any seinen manga you'll be able to handle Chainsaw Man fairly easily because it isn't that dark and mature. I only brought this up to the people that only indulge in shonen manga because this will definitely be something new to them. Chainsaw Man is definitely the black sheep of Shonen Jump's current lineup, but interestingly, it still has been received tremendously well by fans. Not only is there 4.2 million copies of the manga in circulation, it has been trending on Twitter every single time a chapter comes out since the summer. Denji is a poor young man who'll do anything for money even hunting down devils with his pet devil dog Paquita. He's a simple man with simple dreams, drowning under a mountain of debt, but his sad life gets turned upside down one day when he is betrayed by someone he trusts. Now with the power of a devil inside him, Denji's become a whole new man. Chainsaw Man. This is the synopsis of Chainsaw Man which can be found on every website that sells the first volume as the volume description, and as intriguing as it sounds, it barely scratches the surface. What do you think are the most common everyday fears that we humans feel? The fear of enclosed spaces, heights, spiders and snakes, these are some of the first that come to mind but what about the fears we have of more lethal things? What about weapons, guns, swords, even chainsaws? Are you afraid of chainsaws? I know I am, at least I'm afraid of what chainsaws are capable of. They're dangerous tools that, in the wrong hands, can be devastating. Imagine a man that was also a chainsaw. A man that could think and feel and slice your head off with his body. As a matter of fact, let's take all the fears I just mentioned and turn them into conscious creatures that can think for themselves and in some cases, be extremely hostile. In the world of Chainsaw Man, humanity's greatest fears are personified in the form of devils from hell and they exist throughout the world. From zombie devils, to muscle devils, to katana devils, to snake devils and even tomato devils, this world contains these supernatural creatures that embody anything and everything that can evoke fear from mankind. Generally, the rule to these devils is that the scarier and more popular the fear of whatever it embodies is, the more powerful and dangerous the devil can be. This would mean that a katana devil is obviously a lot more powerful than a tomato devil because the fear of a katana is far greater than the fear of a tomato, at least overall across all of humanity. Our main protagonist, Denji, only has a single friend or companion in this world, a chainsaw devil by the name of Pakita. You see, the funny thing is, Paquita's existence breaks this rule of a devil being more powerful and dangerous the more feared it is. Paquita is a small and almost cute red canine with a chainsaw-like blade protruding from the center of his head. It doesn't look anywhere near as frightening as it should. And there's obviously a reason for why the chainsaw devil is a lot less powerful and dangerous than it should be, but delving into that would be major spoiler territory and I intend to keep this minimal. Paquita's form and friendly nature actually serves as a mystery within the story, which is actually a massive aspect of Fujimoto's storytelling, so if you are interested, the story tackles this fantastically, and you'll find out when you read Chainsaw Man. Anywho, Denji wields Paquita as a weapon, and their relationship is akin to a boy and his dog. Adorable yet deadly, Paquita is the only thing that Denji has in the world, and the only thing that cares about him. The first chapter opens up with an interaction between the boy and his dog where we find out that Denji has a debt of 38 million yen and he has been out here hustling in order to pay off this debt. Like I said earlier, he has even sold his organs in order to pay off this debt. He sold a kidney, his right eye and even one of his balls. This kind of brutal poverty isn't something new to shonen protagonists. Take Naruto for example, he was living off of expired milk. But to go to this extreme and for Fujimoto to tackle this terrible situation in such a realistic and desperate manner is something I immediately fell in love with. This told me that this story will do its best to be unconventional in terms of shonen battle manga while still maintaining a lovely balance of realism and uniqueness. And don't get me wrong guys, when it comes to storytelling I will always value good execution over unique concepts, and that's one of the reasons why I am so fond of Jujutsu Kaisen. JJK storytelling isn't particularly special from a conceptual standpoint, but the way Gege has executed things gives it a refreshing appearance and makes it feel as if this has never been done before, and I find that incredibly impressive. But with Chainsaw Man, 
This truly has never really been done before in shonen battle manga and that is what makes this journey so exciting because you couple the unique concepts with fantastic execution and you get something special. Reading Chainsaw Man is one of those thrilling experiences where you can never truly tell what's going to happen next. Like who would imagine that by the end of our first chapter, our main protagonist is murdered by zombie devils. Remember when I mentioned that Denji was in massive debt? Well, his father who committed suicide was in grave debt to the Yakuza and because his father isn't around anymore, Denji has inherited this debt. Long story short, he's betrayed by somebody he trusts, find himself in a battle with the Yakuza in the form of zombie devils and is murdered. Denji dies, he's ripped into shreds and turned into 50 odd pieces of flesh laying in a pile. Through means I won't explain for the sake of spoilers, he is revived and merges with the chainsaw devil Pekita, his only friend in this world. And this is the birth of the chainsaw man, a young boy with a chainsaw protruding out of his head. Sounds stupid but it looks spectacular. We get one of the most iconic spreads in the entire manga where our 16 year old protagonist is laughing his chainsaw face off as he murders countless zombies. He stands there proclaiming that he will just kill everybody he's indebted to, and that's how he'll get his freedom. That should tell you enough about this boy's sense of morality. Pretty savage sight and just the taste of what Fujimoto has in store for his readers in this dark and epic action filled fantasy. This is merely the beginning and the first chapter does a fantastic job of laying the foundations and getting you into the story. It also does a fantastic job of introducing you to our protagonist Denji and telling us about his motivations. Denji is a pretty simple kid. His dreams are pretty different to your typical shonen protagonist. He doesn't boast an overly ambitious dream. He doesn't want to become the next king of the demon hunters or do anything particularly spectacular or world class per se. He's just a simple kid with simple dreams. He wishes to live a normal life, a life without debt, a life without the cruel pain of poverty, a life where he can afford jam to spread on his bread. And on top of all of that, Denji just wants to hug a girl before he dies. Like I said, pretty ordinary and simple kid and I could see many of you guys finding Denji incredibly relatable. Just wanting to chill out and have a normal life. The chapter ends off with Denji's dreams literally coming true. We're introduced to Makima. A certain woman who I will not be delving into at all in this video despite her significance because you deserve to get to know Makima in your own time. She's easily one of the most polarizing characters I have ever come across and your experience with Chainsaw Man will definitely be heavily influenced by your opinions on her. Nevertheless, we're introduced to Makima who, upon Denji's request, hugs him. That was his biggest dream in this world, to be hugged by a girl before death. Following that hug, she tells Denji he would get bread with butter and jam for breakfast if he so wished. Again, more of his simple dreams being granted to him so effortlessly. I mean, it only makes sense, right? His dreams were pretty mundane when you think about it, but the mountain of debt towering over Denji's head gave the impression that these fairly basic luxuries were unachievable. All it took was for somebody, anybody, to show up in his life and give him these luxuries and they would have full control over him. And thus, Denji sells his existence to Makima, becoming her pet in exchange for a better living. Makima is a public safety devil hunter, which means by becoming her pet, Denji has embarked on a journey of devil hunting. And this takes us on a roller coaster of events, including splendidly violent and unique action sequences, humorous exchanges between characters, interactions filled with mystery and fascination, and best of all, some of the most emotional payoffs and narratives I have seen in recent manga. The most crucial aspect of this story is that this is Denji's journey. This is the story of the Chainsaw Man as implied by the title. In the same manner that Naruto is the story about Naruto's journey, Chainsaw Man is the story about Denji's journey. Of course there are so many other things that happen in both Naruto and Chainsaw Man respectively, but at their cause it is the story of the main protagonist's journey. What I absolutely love about both Chainsaw Man and Denji respectively is the manner in which Fujimoto handles Denji's character motivations. He handles it in a way I have rarely ever seen in manga. As I said earlier, Denji received everything he dreamed of at the end of the very first chapter. So where do we go from here? 
Conventionally in storytelling, a main character's dream is achieved towards the end of the story, not the end of the first chapter. This is where Fujimoto's character writing, specifically for Denji, excels because he tackles the theme of desire in such a unique and realistic way. What happens to us when we get what we want? Are we truly content? In some cases, yeah, there's a real beauty in getting what you wanted, being satisfied, and not wanting anymore. But that's rare. That is very rare. In most cases, upon finally achieving what you wanted, you find yourself wanting more. And this is a natural thing that we as humans feel. Our desires are constantly evolving, whether it be wanting more money, more success, more food, more joy. It's very hard for us to feel humbled and fulfilled with what we have. And this theme of constant evolving desire serves as the focal point of Denji's character development. Initially, his supreme desire in this world was to hug a girl. But considering he achieved this at the end of the very first chapter, the boy had to come up with the next motivation, so he moved on to an indulgence that is a little more intimate. Now Denji wants to touch some boobs. Denji makes seeking this indulgence his purpose in life. He puts everything on the line in order to touch some boobs. But considering that getting to touch some boobs isn't the most difficult thing in the world, he quite quickly gets exactly what he wants and achieves this desire but it doesn't live up to expectations, and that is where Denji finds himself in an existential crisis. This sets him on a journey of self-understanding. We see Denji make mistakes, we see him suffer, we see him confused, we see him vulnerable, we see Denji in his childish ignorance, and we see him completely exploited by the evil that Chainsaw Man consists of. And that is by far my favourite aspect of this series. Denji's entire character feels like a subversion of the typical battle shonen protagonist. Denji's dumb and goofy. Why? Because he grew up completely uneducated. But unlike most shonen battle manga, this goofiness from Denji is actually tackled within the manga and framed as a problem. When have you ever seen Luffy's stupidity in One Piece framed as an issue that needs solving? Never, and that isn't a bad thing because there is a charm to that likeable stupidity, but seeing this tackled makes Denji unique as a protagonist in a very beautiful way. Denji has terrible social skills. Why? Because his only ever friend was a chainsaw devil that couldn't speak. Denji has ridiculous and somewhat freakish determination, staring death in the face without a shred of fear. How is he capable of this? Because Pekita, who serves as his heart, makes him practically immortal. When you look deep into the nitty and gritty aspects of Denji, you'll find that Fujimoto hasn't delivered him as a hero in any way. He's delivered him as just a poor kid. He isn't inspiring in any way, he doesn't have applaudable ambitions, and I doubt anybody would look at him as a role model. Denji is a fantastic demonstration of your typical teenage boy's innocence. A boy who is thrown into a world that keeps beating him down through constant creative challenges and attacks his existence. But still, Denji keeps moving forward. Despite the hardships and struggles he faces, he continues to move forward and continues to seek meaning. And that is what I believe to be the main and final message that Fujimoto is trying to deliver with Chainsaw Man. Despite the dark, horrible and soul-crushing challenges we may face, we should keep moving forward just like Denji does. Because life is worth living no matter what. Having jam to spread on our toast in the morning, having a girl to hug and take on a date, having a clean bed to sleep in, having a roof over our heads, these are all luxuries that many of us take for granted. But it is in these luxuries that we find life is worth living. And that is about it guys, I feel like I have barely scratched the surface when it comes to what makes Chainsaw Man such a terrific manga, but this is my first why you should read video and I'm just getting used to this video essay format of content creation, so I'm not expecting this to be the greatest video ever, but I think I've done a solid job, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. <laughs> like the video if you enjoyed, comment below whether or not I have convinced you, and if I did, let me know what you think of Chainsaw Man. Subscribe for more videos like this one on all anime and manga, and with that, I'm gonna head out and have some breakfast. Probably some jam on toast. Peace.